Hello, everybody. So today we are going to make some flowers. And remember, I <clears throat> kind of threatened you that after the Valentine's Day is over, uh, uh, we will be making a bunch of flowers. So, uh, and that was going to be both in sculpted and in canes. And, uh, you know, I, I just did the morning glories in a cane, and then next we'll be doing a, a pendant with them, but not today. Today, and let me say hello, Nunya, Elaine, Frontal, June, Il Elaine, I already said, Ellen, Mary. So, yeah, I know it's still cold in a lot of the U.S. areas. So let's just get a little bit of, yeah, I got the wrong clay. Just a minute. I need, I got the white pearl instead of the white. Just a second. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Hi, Angel. Hi, Carolyn, Noemi. Thank you. Okay, so a lot of you have been asking me over and over and over about making what flower? Do you have any inkling considering the colors that I have here? Hi, Angela. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Tina. Hi, Robin. So, can you guess? Hi, Joyce. Yes, pansies. Everybody's been asking for pansies. So we are going to make some pansies. But to do the pansies in a more economical way, what I'm going to do first is a multiple Skinner blend. And as you can see, I'm taking a few pieces of white, of violet. This is Primo, by the way. Hi, Vero. Hi, Christy. So I'm getting violet, white, sunshine yellow, and cobalt. I just don't want to pull all of, all of it off. <laughs> But I guess I'm gonna. I might need a little bit more white than this. Oh yeah, and before anybody asks, because I, I know I had this discussion with uh, my sponsors on the live about the way that I keep my clay uh, and the question of don't I use those file folders and stuff well I used to use the file folders my problem was that they were taking too much space and no matter how well I was you know flattening the sheet protectors they would still get dry so there was practically no use of keeping them in a sheet protector or in a package because I had to condition them when using all the same. So what I did, I got, actually, let me go grab it. I found that the local family dollar, they are those uh, boxes for uh, fridge which I did find some on Amazon and I 
put them in my Amazon influencer store, but I'm going to be very honest with you. They are w more expensive than, I mean, I paid $4 a piece. Hold on, let me go grab one. So I paid $4 a piece at the family dollar store, but on Amazon, they are like $6. See, there are these boxes that are for the fridge. Fridge and freezer, see, bins. And then I have these four by six self-sealing cellophane. Uh, pouches that the four inches fit almost perfectly in the in the bin and they get closed really good because they are self sealing you know and uh, I can see exactly what I'm talking about so I have three bins like this one is for old primo one is for uh, uh, Fimo, Pardo, and Cernit, because I work less with them. And one is for uh, scraps, because a lot of time I told you that I am, uh, when I have scrap claim, most of the time I'm trying to select it by color, and that's how I'm uh, keeping it. Hi, Laura. Thank you, Vera. You did fine. No worries about your English. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, that I, I use my, I usually separate my scrap clay in colors. And uh, that's how I can have, most of the time I end up with a lot of uh, pearlescent and metallics of all kinds of awesome colors, see? Like this is, and that's how I do all kinds of stuff. And then of course I do a lot of, uh, testing as well but to get back and i think i'm going to need a, a pinch more white and yeah they are a little bit harder to pull out them from the sheet protectors but as i said they don't uh, they don't dry out and don't need so much conditioning <laughs> Because it didn't just didn't make sense to me. Hi, Daniela. Thank you. Now, uh, hi, Donna. Uh, now, I'm going to be very... Hi, Cecile. I'm going to be very, very honest with you. Um, yes, I do know how to make flowers in polymer clay. But uh i will never consider myself an expert in polymer clay hi cherry if you want an expert in flowers then um, i suggest you watch uh there's a russian artist probably most of you know of her uh she works pretty much only with cernet now and her name is rusalina if you want absolutely, totally, perfectly realistic flowers, watch Rusalina's tutorials. They are not exactly for beginners. That is the truth. But they are not either that uh, horrible. Uh, I mean, horrible in terms of difficulty. So you can learn a lot from her if you want to do um, really, really realistic flowers she is the uncontested queen of uh, flower polymer clay flower tutorials on youtube there are a few other russian artists and in this one the russian artists again are pretty much uncontested, uncontested as polymer clay goes making flowers out of polymer clay but rusalina's channel is the channel that i would recommend to you for um learning how to make polymer clay flowers. So what I need, because we are going to make several colors of uh, pansies. 
And because I don't want to have to go, yeah, she is. She is absolutely the best. Um, so what I want to do, because I want to do several colors of pansies, but I don't want to have to do for each of them a little Skinner blend, I am going to go ahead and do a big Skinner blend. And then I am going to simply cut my petals for the respective colors. And then I'll show you also how to uh, make economies so that even if you don't use all the Skinner blend, you can still reconstitute it. Okay, so I have the sunshine yellow. If you don't have sunshine yellow, just uh, use uh, half and half cadmium yellow and white and you'll get something very very similar yeah yeah uh wire wrapping uh yvonne williams is fabulous at wire wrapping and then there are a few other but i don't know them by heart i don't do wire wrapping anymore i used to do a lot but because of my hands i cannot do it anymore Hi, Helen. Where's my... And I'm going to have to go with it to the pasta machine for a little bit. And remember, I said this in a few tutorials to date. If you want to speed up your Skinner blend, uh, then just go ahead and roll it. And why is that? Because you'll have a lot of um, lines there. And that will make getting the Skinner blend much faster. And then you can also pretty much control and make sure that you don't go wrong. And you can also keep your Skinner blend fairly narrowed down. Hi, Shirley. Um. <clears throat> there are some that are not very difficult. But it depends what you want to focus on. If you want to focus more on uh, four gemstones, if you want to focus more on techniques, I can tell you that two of them that are very good to get uh, yourself more familiarized with controlled Mokume Gane, for example, would be, I have two, one that just came out and is uh, still at the 20% off. Uh, the flower explosions, and uh, then there's another one that's called Shadow and Smoke. But uh, I'm trying to think. Then uh, there is a 
necklace <clears throat> that I'm showing how to make using a faux Peter type stone. But you can use pretty much any other faux stone or any other kind of cabochon. Um, it's a very, hold on, let me go grab it because I didn't sell it yet. see this one is fairly easy to make and it uses one Alisa Pavelka's textures and as you can see you can use a four Peter side that's my largest uh, video tutorial but you can use pretty much anything else here you can use uh, turquoise you can use any of the free uh, for gemstone tutorials I've put up, not necessarily the Peter site. Thank you. And uh, let me think, what else? I really, I'm planning on coming out with more uh, paid tutorials for beginners, but uh, I mean, that would be a little bit more unique. But I think that there's quite a bit of tutorials for beginners that I have on YouTube. I kind of try to get the information for the beginners for free, you know. And only what is really, really special or that took me a lot of work to experiment and a lot of materials and stuff, only that one, I really put it as a paid tutorial. Uh, I don't have Patreon. I don't know where you went, but I don't have Patreon. I don't work with Patreon. You mean my website? I actually posted a video on how for artists, how to do a uh, monthly sponsorship without having to use Patreon so they wouldn't pay extra. Yeah, I have articles and more. I actually need to do some updates there. I need to put up all the sponsor rewards. I didn't update that for the past month. um okay i'm going to tell you something i do have an atlas and i am absolutely thrilled with it um i do plan on purchasing soon a makings just because i want to see the difference and i do need a second machine because sometimes i have to do a whole bunch of uh, conditioning and skinner blending and all that and I don't want to heat up the uh, pasta machine too much, the motor too much, especially when in, when I'm working with the female. That takes a little bit longer to do Skinner blends than uh, Primo. So I would be able to tell you. But yes, I do have a, an Atlas 180 with a motor that somebody bought for me and I am absolutely thrilled with it and as a as a piece of advice if you go for an atlas just 
the extra 20 bucks to get the i think it's like 20 dollars extra to get a 180 compared to a 150 is really worth it it's really really all worth it I think I made a little bit too much, but oh well. Oh, thank you. But yeah, having a, a machine with a motor is really worth it. And uh, I have another Atlas that is an old model that I actually found at Goodwill, and I think it was like $7.50 or something like that. But being an old model, uh, it doesn't have those two holes to put the motor on. So you don't have to get both at the same time. That's what I was saying. If you need to put money aside to budget for it, you can get first the machine and then get the motor for it. Well, Shirley, let me tell you a secret. I have a, an Amaco. The thing with Amacos is that it's the luck of the draw. Because you can get, you can be lucky and get an absolutely fabulous one. And you can get unlucky and get a piece of crap. But I have an Amaco that I'm still using that is, I don't like, 17 years old, something like that. Uh, it's not working that good anymore because at one point somebody helped me clean it and uh, they used a hunting knife. So they messed up my scrapers. And because of that, the machine right now only has two settings, the one and the nine, the super thick and the super thin. But I'm still using it for conditioning, for making uh, when the, the Atlas, when I feel that the motor on the Atlas is getting a little warm, I continue the um, uh, conditioning or Skinner blend on, on the Amaco. So yeah, don't dismiss the cheap, machines out of the blue but on the other hand if you buy machines from uh, cheap machines from amazon do not buy a cheap machine that says clearly uh, pasta machine because unfortunately lately they started putting the making the scraping blades out of plastic and it gets eaten up by the polymer clay i got a cheap here i need more white i got a cheap pasta machine uh that was only like 20 dollars and it was working fine only at one point i was like okay what's this piece coming out with the hard piece coming out with the clay and it was a piece of scraper and that's when I noticed that the scrapers were plastic. So. Okay, so what was the, what you're talking about, the model number on the bottom? Let me see, because I lost that. Well, I can tell you something on mine. The only problem that I have with mine is that on uh, sometimes it leaves gear streaks. 
And if I try to go super, super, super thin, depending on the kind of clay I'm using, it might shred it. So I need to use the, remember I showed you how. I get these from the Dollar Tree. And these are placed on these very, very thin things. And I just removed the, the patch and I use these to put the clay in between to get an uninterrupted, phew, that's things, an uninterrupted uh, super thin sheet. Because <clears throat> you kind of need that whenever you want to cover up uh, some surface effect that you don't want to have to varnish and you, you want to just go ahead and sand and buff, you pretty much need that. Yeah, Sculpey, I honestly, I have only heard bad stuff about it. And don't get me wrong, a lot of the Sculpey stuff is awesome. Um... Uh, my main issue with them is that they are very inconsistent. You know, it's the same thing as with the clay. Uh, the clay would be absolutely fabulous, only that it's very inconsistent in quality. We all know how many issues we had only in the last two years, both with the white and the translucent and um, some of the metallics. And then it's all this change. Oh, we're going to make this color? No, we are not making this color anymore. But, uh, you know, it's the most affordable and accessible on the U.S. market. So, and cereal bags for what? Oh, you couldn't? Uh, I don't know what to say. You can use the um, wax paper for that too. Just put them in between. Or if you can find some laminate sheets. You know, the trans transparency film. Okay, let's go on a six and see how this works. Yeah, this should be okay. And I'm going to make some a little bit larger so you can see what I'm doing. Let me go ahead and grab my cutter. Okay, now let me show you a tip. Yeah, I'm talking about all the polyform products. I mean, some of them are awesome. Some of them are kind of crappy. Uh, let me show you something. This I actually made out of a round cutter. You know, the regular makings. And then I was able to buy the Primo set of cutters, the one that's got like seven of them. So then I just changed this one into a rounded corners triangle. And then also you can use, depending on the size, you can use a heart cutter for some of the petals. But it all depends on the size. And then if you want to make them even smaller, you can use the camper cutters, and that would be essentially mostly the 
uh, teardrop but of course you can use the heart you can use all kinds of other things so let me bring up real quick a, a pansy on my screen all righty so oh no not you here so let's grab a let's make a yellow one and let's make a bluish one okay so we always need pretty much five petals we would have uh, i didn't get my writing stuff here actually it's not always five sometimes it's just four it depends on the pansy i was talking a little bit of nonsense but essentially most of the time for most of the pansies you will have a big one behind or two behind so it's either this shape or you actually have two then you would have two on the sides and then you have a big one here in the middle that most of the time is heart shaped pretty much so if we go <clears throat> excuse me if we go for a yellow i'm going to need the purplish and of course you can do all kinds of combinations with these right uh let's do a purplish middle And let's do a blue one, too. Okay, let me turn it backwards because I cannot see where I'm cutting like that. So, as I said, you have to remember that usually on the Sunday's ones, Sunday's lives, I'm trying to show stuff that's uh, easy to make, pretty much beginner style and stuff that I cannot uh, um, the daisy, the cane. Uh, check on Facebook because remember that last year I wasn't able to do any lives because of you know who's filing a bogus copyright claim on my lives so I wouldn't be able to do lives she was actually trying to close my channel but so for like two months I had all the lives on Facebook so check the Facebook uh, page I did uh, bring over a few of them I know that I brought over the pants the frangipani and the white owl pendant but uh, I didn't I didn't make any peace with it if that's what if you're looking for a piece I didn't make any peace with it unfortunately you know that I have several projects that I never managed to do a a follow-up on because I had all kinds of health issues 
interfering. So let's say we are going to go for a pendant. So I have here a scrap metallic. It's all kinds of old. Yeah, you know that she filed bogus claims also against other people, including Samantha from Jessama tutorials. But, you know, what can we say? So. Let's do a, no, I'm not going to do a shape as of yet, actually. I'm just trying to find a, I've been working on a lot of stuff lately and my whole area is filled with stuff that needs, is in various stages of being worked on. Let's grab, this should be easy to work on. It's a bronzish. Pretty much. But you can, you can use whatever color you want. I just happen to have, to have this, uh, you know, handy here and i'm going to make a little bit of just a tiny bit of mica shift on it and you can use any kind of texture you want you don't have to use necessarily this one i like uh, donna kato sponges because they give so much uh interest you know make all stuff interesting and you don't have to worry a lot including worry about your stuff getting your texture getting all squished when you try to apply it on something because you can simply come back and press that sponge a little bit more and i tried other variants before because for a while donna was out of them when i tried to buy it and uh, i tried all kinds of other solutions that were suggested by people i mean including the fish tank filter air filter but none of them worked as good as this so i guess i just stuck with it in the end and i bought it yeah no not Yeah, I think that uh, yeah, I was asked about several, but I don't know everybody's, uh, all the artists' uh, workshop dates. I know that quite a few of them have some. I know Donna Cato has, Marisa Gall has, uh, Teresa Salgado has. But I don't know, you, you'd have to go on their website. Heck, I can barely remember what I ate this morning. And if I slept in between reading the information and now you can be sure that I don't remember. <laughs> so, yeah. All righty. Now let's place this on the baking thing. And actually, let me give it a cut anyway. And to be very honest, what I would do, I would first bake my blank and only after that I would place the flowers. 
because that allows me to first sand nicely the base but you can do the base with all kinds of things you don't have to do you can just make it plain you know okay the zinnia yeah yeah do you mean in uh, sculpted or cane because that is very important okay now now we are going to do some things with this and you are going to be very prepared to be amazed okay <laughs> all right so number one you see what i was talking about uh, oops of course i had to drop it um uh, about the gear lines that the machine sometimes leaves Oh, well, I'm going to have to get the other. So you have here several options in order to do the whole um, veining on the flower. You can go ahead and as I showed many, many times before, you can use the palm of your hand. And I don't need the bigger one. And the problem when you do this uh, most of the time is... Yeah, I bake on my shape, most almost always. It's easier. I don't uh, see the thing is that if you work directly on your baking bam blank, you won't have to. Uh, you don't risk, you know, distorting in any way, because if you work on something and then you pick it up to put it on the baking blank, you run the risk of distorting it. Okay, so your main problem on this one, to do this, will be that uh, the ball stylus will want to kind of stick to the clay. The best thing to do is to simply wipe it a little bit with a little bit of armor all. But, and it also depends on how veined your hands are. Mine are very veined. So, let me focus this properly. See, there's a lot of veining. Another thing that you can do, of course, is to use a veiner, you know, but if you don't have one, that's what I'm showing here, if you don't have a veiner, then you just go ahead and very, very gently, actually, let me get this up on something so I can show you better. And it is fine if it gets slightly distorted because, you know, flower petals are not always perfect. Oh, come on. All right. So. Hello, Colleen. Okay. So, this will be the middle of the flower, right? So, just go gently, 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 gently. You don't press much. Just a little bit. And see you have veining. One thing that you need to do now, let me grab the other one. And you can do it even with a much smaller bowl. And don't do what I just did. But another thing that you need to do and i'm going to try and do it i hope i won't mess it up because it's kind of remember i have some eyesight issues uh, 
one thing that is very important here, if you don't want to have to mess up with um, uh, canes, because I will do a pansy cane, I promise. I will do that too. But hold on, I'm trying to find my needle tool. Okay. One thing that you want to do is with the needle, and this has to be done with the needle. Oops, Connor here. Uh, do a few lines, and I'll show you why you need to do it with the needle here in a, in a little bit. And then place it on a piece of wax paper, because you'll have to do something to it before placing it on the spot and you kind of want to protect your working surface so let's go ahead and do all of them And yeah, if you have a veiner, you don't have to worry about all of this, but... Hola, Evelyn. Como estas? Again, a lot of airplanes. I don't know, it always scares me whenever they're... I live in, uh, very close to an Air Force base. And whenever there's a lot of airplanes taking off, I get scared that something is happening somewhere. So if you're hearing any noise, that's what you're hearing. And those definitely sound like bombers. And quite a lot of them taking off. Okay. Too many crazy people in this world. Hi, Marilyn. Now remember, I I lose stuff in the chat because I have to have my eyes on what I'm doing here. And if you ask something and you see that I don't answer, just repeat the question, please, because it means it kind of scrolled up with the chat and I didn't see it. Weekend Warriors. Oh, I was hoping, I was going to try and chat with Deborah. Let me give you some uh, news about her. If you missed my announcement, um, most of the people who are subscribers uh, of my channel for have been for a long time uh, know Deborah Rice. She's a very, very sweet lady. And in December, at the end of December, around Christmas, she was diagnosed with the worst form, the most aggressive form of glioblastoma. Glioblastoma being the most aggressive form of brain cancer. And uh, she had surgery, they removed the main part of the tumor, they cannot remove all of it because it's the kind of tumor that sends fingers. And uh, since that, she had uh, another tumor appearing on the left side of her brain this time. But anyway, uh, her last, she went into the nearby large city to have treatment. She had... Uh, radiation she started chemo she will be consider uh, continuing chemo for the remainder of her life 
And this is a treatment just to extend her life. Glioblastoma has absolutely no cure and doesn't have a long life expectancy. And we were all hoping that uh, she will be able to uh, withstand the, the chemo and the radiation without problems because they are very, very hard on the body and especially with her being right after surgery. But uh, one thing I can tell you, she's been doing absolutely great. In the beginning, she had a little bit of issues because uh, it was making her really sick and she couldn't hold in any water or food. But in, uh, since then, they changed her anti nausea meds and she's been doing great. She's very upbeat. Uh, I will try at one point to, because normally we chat on Skype, but I will try at one point to chat with her on Google Hangouts. So I can, uh, and she said she's okay with it. So I can tape our conversation so you guys can also see her. And uh, if you weren't aware, I uh, started a little donation button on my blog that goes directly into her uh, PayPal account if you want to help with, because she's uh, retired and disabled, she has a very low income. But, and as I said, the life expectancy is not very long. But if you want to help with her being able to, you know, get a little bit better food and things that might help her with, uh, with being comfortable. For now, you can head on to my uh, blog and you'll find there, uh, there's an entry, uh, donations for Debra Rice. And if you click that button, it will take, you don't have to have a PayPal account. And uh, she thanks everybody who has donated until now. She said it's enormously appreciated. And she got um, a wig uh, from, uh, I think it was American Cancer Society. And it's a beautiful wig and she's very happy. And as I said, Monday will be her last radiation treatment. And her daughter is still with her and will stay with her uh, till the end, most likely. So she's not alone. And she's doing great and she's uh, telling everybody hello. I was hoping to see her because she said she was going to try and be on. But because of her... Uh, issues. She's got a very hectic sleeping. Most of the time she's awake all night and sleeping during the day. So, But anyway, I wanted to tell you guys that miraculously and amazingly and awesomely she was able to go through the treatment without big issues. And it's amazing how upbeat she is. And the ones of you who know her, you know, she's absolutely sweet and caring and kind and everything. Okay, only three more. And then I'll show you the trick with the... Because remember that the pansies have that, those little very, very fine lines. And normally those, you get them caning. But I'll show you how you can get them really easy. Just takes a little bit of practicing it. But otherwise, you can get them real easy. And very fine. That's why I'm using the needle, not something else. And two more. And uh, again, if you want to make them, because remember some of the pansies, they have the upper petal 
of one color and the bottom petals of a different color or the heart-shaped petal of a different color. And all you have to do is to just cut from different uh, areas of the Skinner blend. That's all you have to do. And you can get all kinds of variations and combinations and pretty, 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 pretty pansies. I think I posted, uh, yeah, I had, uh, before I took my break from creating, I had, uh, I think it was like 2010, 2011. And somebody brought me a family heirloom that was uh, a ring with really, 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 really tiny uh, enamel cloisonne pansies. And uh, she asked me if I could make a pendant and earrings to match. And I actually did. But there was really interesting to work so tiny and those were made with canes but if you look on my facebook uh, page on the kaliana facebook page look in the photos and you'll see them All right. So what I'm going to use is the Mantia Black Piñata alcohol ink. Actually, let me move them all on the... Because I'm going to have to be very, very careful not to make a mess. Uh, remember when I was showing you the, um, and I did that dragon skin bracelets. Can I drop something? Uh, and I was explaining that it is uh, the quality of liquids. I forgot how it's called in English. When the liquids start climbing, whenever there's a very, very tiny tube or aperture. And this is exactly what we are going to use here. And I'm going to grab a toothpick to help me, but I'll have to remove my eyeglasses. And I am going to place a little bit of So I wouldn't make messes, but what you want is to bring just droplets cannot really see what I'm doing ay, ay, ay. let's try this okay try just to touch I hope I'm not going to make a mess 
it's too much. I too much, too much. I thought I told you I'm gonna make a mess. Horrible, all that work. Cannot do it under the camera. Ay. This is a disaster. Oh well. I almost fixed it. Let me try something else. Give me just a minute. I'm, I know. I think I know what I can do. I'll be right back. Of course, when you're in a hurry, all the pets in the house will have to be in your feet. Okay. Okay, uh, don't put up your email in a public chat. You can contact, if you go on her uh, channel, you can send her a message. No, a Q-tip will soak too much. I'm going to use this. These are blunt uh, needles that I normally uh, use for resin, for making inclusions of color in resin. So I'm going to try and do it this way. Let me put it on something else. I normally have no problems doing this, but it's hard to work with it under the camera when you don't see very well, you know? And when you have the camera in the way. Okay, let me take off my glasses again. So let's try this again. It still does a little bit of... See now what I'm talking about, how it does the, it goes up those little lines I made with the needle. I guess 
to close all of it. Hey, that was a lot. I'm making so many messes. But we are getting there. Anyway, I hope you got the, the idea <laughs> of what you're supposed to do. Just don't do a lot of it. That's the whole thing. And you'll get a nice, pretty, thin, beautiful lines. Exactly like on the passes. Even with all the mess that I made, it's not bad. Just got some under the petal and that's not a nice thing. Okay, we are pretty good now. I can put my eyeglasses back on and catch up with the chat. Okay. Yeah, it's the same. Uh... Yeah, pipette would work too. Just put just a tiny drop and then use the alcohol an alcohol puff on it and you should be just fine clean this you always remember any mess you might make with the alcohol ink it can get cleaned with alcohol okay let me refocus this Hi, Sabine. That's okay. Hi, Joe. Hi, Patricia. I didn't say hi for all the newcomers, so. So let's place, should I place the blue one first? Let's place the blue one first.
And as I said, if you want to make the petals of different colors, all you have to do is just remember that they are two by two similar. All you have to do is to cut in different areas of the Skinner blend. Oops. Okay, and now we need to very gently modify them a little bit. Just, you know. Give them a little bit of movement. You know what? I should have done something else. Hold on. I'm going to undo this. <laughs> I just had a different idea. Let's. Hey. Let's combine them. Come on, get off. There we go. There it's possible. This was not a very good choice of a baking blanc because it moves so much. Again, let's give it a little bit of shape. Let's grab two little Yes, you will. <laughs> you will have to. And as I said, all you have to do is to make this even narrower, the skinner blend, to make smaller pansies, smaller flowers. And there we go, we have one. And let's do the next one, let's do it backwards. Actually, I'm going to leave this one like this. I'm going to make some other stuff down here, smaller probably, some smaller ones. So let's place this one just simply on a, and we'll make another pendant. We'll continue with this even if it's I've been on for over an hour and I'm starting to hurt but we'll continue with this I promise you we'll be making quite a bit of flowers this spring okay so the first two Then the next ones. Hey. 
and for the for next sunday i'll show you even more tricks i will wrap this to have it all wrapped up and for next sunday i will show you even more uh tricks on how you can make these look absolutely super fabulous because for example what i can do with this one let me go grab my stuff so first i can place where are you? at the top here at the bottom You're going to place a little I thought it would not have to come to this but it will have to and I don't find my hey this is what I hate when they turn upside down And of course, it had to turn upside down when I put it there. Gosh. Hey. Do you talk with your stuff too? <laughs> and I always do. Okay, that's enough. Good night, Cecile. I told you it would be so much easier if I s could see better, but I don't. Of course. Stupid thing. When it's supposed to stick, it doesn't stick. When it's not supposed to stick, that's when it sticks. Into the rhinestone picker. And you can do the same thing actually also with the seed beads. Just make sure that they are glass seed beads not uh, plastic because they'll melt i uh, see i don't have a problem with them especially if i would use the tweezers and stuff the problem is that i cannot see well i have to be right above them at about three inches away and if the camera is here i cannot do it <laughs> you know so Okay, and I'm going to do one more thing to them just to make them even more blingy. And I'm not going to even use something that's too fancy. Too fancy, I said not too fancy 
I'm going to put a little bit more bling on them. Okay, what was that? I swear these cats have been a pain all morning, especially Connor. And he's in kitty frenzy. It's like... I'm doing a little bit of mica painting. Just on the edges of the petals. It's not very well focused now, is it? Is it better? No. I will bring it close to the camera once I'm done so you can see exactly what I did. <laughs> 50 dirty words only yeah, I usually use like 3 or 4 all the time so And this one I'm going to bake on wax paper. And let's give it a little bit of dimension too. The thing is that you want this one to be a little bit puffed up in the middle underneath here. Like this. Okay, let me. You went too far. Okay, let me focus. Okay. Let me turn this light off so you can see better because it's sometimes too much brightness can take away from the... But... Uh... Anyway, with all the mishaps and stuff, you got the idea of how to make them. As I said, I normally make them smaller than this. I uh, I like them to be much smaller. But we'll uh, finish. I will make a few smaller and get them on here. And then we'll continue making the, the pendants with them. But I showed you how to make them. So for next time, I'll have a few already made. And I'll have the stuff put together. Uh, I mean, we'll put the stuff together to make uh, not just a pendant, but also some earrings. And I'll have a few made of different colors. So that's what we are going to look at for next Sunday. I know, as I said, I know this will not be the perfect thing, especially because it's hard for me to work right under here. And sorry for the mishaps, but I hope you understood the whole principle behind the the little lines on how it's supposed to be done so um 
I showed in the beginning exactly the colors. Yeah, they are all hot fix. Let me let me get back to answer any questions. Okay. It's just the reflection from when I did the the lines with the uh, ball stylus. It pulls a little bit on the clay. Okay. <laughs> Let me try and get. Oh my God, I know, I can hear you. I hear you with the tipping the rhinestone jar. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Uh, okay, so Sabina, I used uh, Primo Violet. The, the whole thing is cobalt blue, white, violet, white, sunshine yellow. If you don't have sunshine, uh, you, of course you can use ultramarine blue. If you don't have sunshine yellow, just use half and half, um, make it out of half and half zinc and white, zinc yellow and white. Okay. Yes, I will be making a pansy cane too. Okay. So I will see you all next Sunday and we'll just, I'll, I'll have several flowers already made. I'll have several bases already made and we'll just put them together and we'll put bling and pearls and all kinds of stuff on them. Okay. So thank you for being here with me and I will see you all next Sunday. Remember 12.30 p.m. Central Time, that's GMT minus six. Thank you so much. Bye everybody and have you have a nice what's left of Sunday. <laughs> and good night for people who are across the ocean. Happy claying. <laughs>